Welcome to part two of our webcast on how to go about discovering uh, buffer overflow problems, designing exploits, and then finally turning them into Metasploit exploits. In this section, uh, we're again taking a look at some material from our Secure Coding in C and C++ course that I've written for the SANS Institute. And we encourage you to take a look, of course, at that course and even some other courses that we'll mention at the end here, particularly when it comes to how to go about creating exploits. But for right now, in the last section, we just looked at how buffer overflows can happen, sort of the mechanics behind it. Now we're going to take a look here at how to go about finding flaws in an application. So what we're going to take a look at doing is essentially what's called fuzzing. Now fuzzing can have other meanings too. It's more technically, there's more things to it than this. But for us, our basic definition is going to be that we're going to try to jam anything we can into every opening that we can find in an application. That might be network ports, that could be pieces of the user interface, that could be uh, database fields. Anything that you can find where you can put data, you jam in different kinds of material. You'd like to try for things that are too big, maybe things that are too small, things that are the wrong type. And what you're trying to do is get the application to misbehave in some way. Well, for us, we've got a very, very simple network listener that's been created. It's a, a simple program. I've got it running over here, or I can run it over here. Let me get it started. We've got this thing called server. Very, very basic piece of code. And that server will begin listening on port 7777. And when we connect to it, we can see that it asks me for some command. When I type in the command and press enter, it sends back the command to me and closes the port. In the background, you can see the actual server running. The server is a multi-threaded application, and it will actually accept multiple connections, even simultaneously. So this application is just written to illustrate the kinds of problems that we find in different sorts of code. In particular, it's going to demonstrate some of the problems that we have in C code. So we've got this basic application here. Let's, uh, let's see how we could discover if this thing has a flaw. Now to find the flaw, we're looking again for unexpected behavior. And the simplest way to do that, to test for that unexpected behavior, is to try to send unexpected data. For instance, what would happen if we sent no data? What would happen if we sent too much data? What would happen if we sent the wrong kind of data? All of these different conditions need to be examined. Sometimes it's not just a matter of having too much or too little. Sometimes there is an exact amount that turns out to be very, very special. And we talk about this a lot in the Secure C class, particularly, particularly when it comes to integer problems, that we can often discover at boundary areas. For instance, at the area where we might roll over from being a positive number to a negative number, depending how the numbers are stored in memory. That's a little bit outside of what we're talking about here. For more information, you can take a look at our C class. But let's talk about how we can find this particular flaw. What we need to do, and this is the simplest thing to do, is to run the code in the debugger. In a, and then, while the code is running, try to attack the code. If we can do this, and then the code crashes for some reason, the debugger can tell us exactly what was happening in memory. There is another way we can go about it, and this is my preferred way. When we're running something in a debugger, very, very often, the memory addresses will actually get shifted around a little bit. So when we're trying to create an exploit, if we run the code right inside of the debugger, we can end up having to tinker a lot with it, or maybe even we we'll begin fighting against the problem that doesn't really exist, because when we run it against the live code, well, the debugger is not there, and the memory addresses have only shifted a little bit, but our exploit no longer works much easier way to do this that I find is to simply turn on core dumps. Now I've already done that on this system here. The core dumps, once they're turned on, allow you to run your code and then if your code crashes, it will automatically generate a core dump. That core dump can then be opened up in your debugger and show you the same type of information you would see if the program crashed with the debugger running, except that there was no debugger running. So all of the memory addresses are exactly where you would expect to find them in real code. Well, for our example, we're going to see how we can send too much data to this application. I've got some screenshots to talk about it here, but let's actually work through it with the live server. First of all, in, in this particular case, I've already run this tool before and done some experimentation beforehand to create my slides. 
So you may notice that we already have a core dump file. What I'd like to do is just remove that now so that if we get this to crash, we'll be able to have a new core dump, something that we can work with. We also can see that the server is running in the background here in the other window. So all I need to do is send some data into this application and see what happens. One of the easiest ways to do this is to leverage something like Perl or Ruby or Python to send the data through the application. We actually have an example of that here in the slide. Notice here at the bottom, we have Perl being used to send an expression. What it's doing is sending eight, I'm sorry, 10 capital letter A's through this network connection using netcat. Let's just give that a try and see what happens. So if we run Perl-E, and then we tell it what to do. What I'd like you to do is print the letter A 10 times and send that through netcat connected to 127.0.0.1, port 7.7.7.7, where our server is. When I run that, I can see in the background the server connection came through. I can even run it more than once. And each time, it echoes back at me the 10 capital letter A's. So everything's okay so far. Maybe we'll try a somewhat higher number. For instance, let's try 15. Everything still looks okay. Maybe we'll try, how about 50? Well, that's interesting. What happened now? When I sent 50, I did not get the data echoed back to me on the screen. If I look now, I still don't see a core dump, but clearly there's something unusual happening. Let me try to send even more data. Let's try to send, how about 5,000? Mm. Well, now in this case, not only didn't I get the data echoed back, but it even created a core dump. Now, in our example, we started just sending a few characters. In the real world, when trying to find exploits or find vulnerabilities, we don't usually try 10, then 15, then 20. Just send 50,000 and see what happens. If there is a buffer overflow problem, it's going to crash the application, and that's really what we're looking for. So coming back here to our slides, we can see now in this example that or in the slide here, I sent 15,000, and it crashed the application, and we still got the core done. 